everyone, my name is Miranda, and today I'm here to do my monthly book wrap up for the last three months, April, May, and June. I know it has been 84 years since I last filmed a monthly wrap up, and the reason for that really is just that I've been in kind of a reading slump. I haven't been reading as much as I normally do. I do uh, the past three months. I don't have too many books. Well, I do, but like each month is not a ton of books. So uh, bear with me, and as always, feel free to comment down below if you read any of these books or read great books during these months and would recommend me checking them out because I'm always looking for some good books. Especially now that I'm in a reading slump, I want to get that one that's going to get me out of this, you know? So let us start with April, and the first book I read for that month is Unfiltered by Lily Collins, and that is a kind of memoir by Lily Collins the actress. You know her from the Shadowhunters movie. Um, she was in a Taylor Lautner movie. <laughs> you know who she is. And this basically was her memoir and when I first found out that she was writing a memoir I was kind of skeptical because it's like when she's that, when some, it's someone young you're like what exactly do you have to say and not just in like a, not in like a condescending way but like you know like how much can you talk about because honestly your life has been not that long so far. So I was super excited to find out that this memoir was obviously one of my favorites. I think it was so good and it talked about so many important issues, especially for young women, and I didn't realize how much of an advocate Lily Collins is until I read this. It was really nice to see someone put that into perspective and someone who's been through that. I think it's really nice to see someone who's been in that position telling you that it gets better, you know, because it's one thing to just hear it, but it's another thing to say someone who's been through it and been like, you know, I see what, why it's worth it. I see why having an eating disorder, I see the benefits of why when you're trapped in there you think it's worth it, but it's really not. And I think it had some really great advice and I would highly, highly recommend it. I gave it five out of five stars. After that, I read Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levensteller, I think is how you say her last name. I have a whole review on that that I'll link down below, but this book was really, really awesome. It came out this year and I wanted to read it basically because Daughter of the Pirate King. How many times do you read about pirates in YA and especially girl pirates? So um, my Elizabeth Swan fangirl in me was like, yes. And I was really, really excited. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that not only is this book about pirates, but it also has kind of another fantasy aspect underneath it, like a secondary, secondary genre that I'm not going to ruin. You're going to have to read the book, but I just think it was such a cute, fun, quick read, nothing too serious, but definitely entertaining, and I gave it four out of five stars. After that, I read The Dark Prophecy, which was probably one of my most anticipated books. It's the second in the Trials of Apollo series, and I was pretty disappointed by this book. I mean, I think it was still really, really good, but it's the first Rick Riordan book I've ever read that felt unnecessary. Like, it literally just felt like it was trying to get us to the next point and I had a whole video on this that I explained more but basically like yes every book in a series unless it's the last one is trying to get you someplace but I feel like previous to this there had been a point there had been a lesson that needed to be learned and you could only learn it in this situation that the book puts you in whereas in Dark Prophecy I felt like the whole lesson was just the fact that like oh we got to go to this third place for the third book because you know they're not going to get to it in this book and I just found that really frustrating especially because each book comes out only once a year so really to have a filler book and then have to wait a year now for the payoff just seems kind of uh annoying to me and I also think that because Trials of Apollo was so good I was expecting so so much more so I ended up giving this book three and a half out of five stars. Heading on over to May I first read Beauty and the Beast Lost in a Book which is amazing. It's like a tie-in kind of thing to the movie that came out in March. It happens like kind of during the movie like you don't see any of it happen in the movie obviously but like the movie has already started. Belle is living in the castle with Beast but it's before the end of the movie and everything so it kind of fits in nicely like that and I think it's great it definitely has a niche you know like if you are not a Beauty and the Beast fan I don't know if you're gonna enjoy this book probably not but it really does add I think a lot on to what the characters are and you know if you enjoyed the story I think it's a nice little addition you get to see some more cute Belle and Beast moments I mean some parts of it were unbelievable in the kind of the stupid choices Belle made because you're like she's so much smarter than this but if you can get through that it introduces you to a really cool and fascinating and different world and again it gives you more time with these characters and I'm always always up for that so I gave it five out of five stars. For that I read The Carnivorous Carnival and The Slippery Slope which are book nine and book ten 
in the Series of Unfortunate Events series. And as you know, I've been steadily, slowly making my way through this over the last few months, this series. And I decided after book 10 that I think I'm going to take a break. I don't know if I'll go back to it. I just feel like I'm really getting frustrated with kind of the never getting answers. And then when we do get answers, they're so topsy-turvy and we only get more questions. And it just... To me, it got to the point where, like, the payoff isn't going to be worth it because it's just, it's too much right now. So, I ended up giving Carnivorous Carnival 4 out of 5 stars and Slippery Slope got 2 out of 5 stars. After that, I read a non-fiction adult book and that was The Radium Girls, which is a highly, highly fascinating book. I super recommend you read it, especially if you're, like, you're looking for a good summer reading book that's pretty entertaining. It is pretty big, but it reads very fast because it's one of those stories that's kind of mixed in, like, the historical facts with also, like, just a storytelling. So, like, someone woke up blah blah stuff like that but it's about these so-called radium girls who worked in clock painting factories um, during the world wars and how they were made to paint with radium paint and they were encouraged to get like the best kind of design they could get so they would put the brushes which had the radium into their mouths and lick them and be covered in it, you know, from just the dust. There were just really no precautions against it. And of course, they didn't know the research then that they know now, but all these girls started falling sick and literally started disintegrating. And it's just so heartbreaking to see the fight these girls have to put up against the people who should be held accountable for this and how far they have to go for their justice. It's really heartbreaking, but I mean, it's also really inspiring to see how these girls banded together and how they wouldn't let this divide them. And even as they were dying off one by one, their most important concern was for their families and for the other girls so that this wouldn't happen to anyone else. And I absolutely loved it. I would give it five out of five stars and I can't wait for someone to make a movie out of it because I'm sure they're going to. It's just such a fascinating and heartbreaking story. And then in June, good old June, I only read two books. First one was Rise of the Isle of the Lost, which is the third book in like the Descendants trilogy. It's taking place right before Descendants 2 is starting. I didn't even realize this was going to be a third book in the series. I thought it was just the two. So to read this, I was real excited. I wasn't the biggest fan of book two. So book three, I was kind of wary, but it had awesome new characters. Ursula's daughter, Captain Hook's son, and Gaston's son, who, you know, but I just like the element of we kind of got like a new aspect to the Isle of the Lost now because it's like the grove kind of, you know, the underwater, more like aquatic kids, if that makes sense, you know? And I really, really did like it. It's set up where the movie's gonna go, I feel like, nicely. And it was just nice to see all the characters back. And I think, again, Ursula's daughter, such a good addition, and Captain Hook's son, I really, really love them. So I'm excited to see the showdown they're gonna have in the movie. And I gave that book five out of five stars. And then lastly, I read Before She Ignites by Jodie Meno. I read an arc of it. This is not out yet, but I read it simply because, A, I love Jodie Meadows, but also, it's about dragons. And how much often, like, do you get to read about dragons and why? Not that often, which is why I was disappointed when I was reading it and it didn't even have that many dragons in it. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not. I'm just going to very vaguely say that this is a good book because it has a main character that deals a lot with anxiety and panic attacks and, like, actually talks you through it in a way that, like, it's not just like, oh, I get anxious sometimes. Like, she literally, you see her deal with it. So I really love that. But at the end of the day, again, I think it was just a character that wasn't, like, didn't do what I wanted her to necessarily, you know, like she was always being like, I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna do the right thing, and then never really did it. So you're like, I'm not seeing where you're coming from. So I was disappointed. I gave it three out of five stars, but maybe when it comes out, you guys will like it better. Definitely let me know down below. And that is it for the books I read these past few months. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel down below to make all sorts of new videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!